Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be taking a look at a Ludi Cargo deck from the 2005 format. Now I like to describe this deck as the perfect counter deck because I honestly feel like you could build this deck to have a good matchup against any other deck in the format. The problem that comes along with this is is that you end up with a 65 or 70 card deck because you can't build the perfect counter to every deck in the format. So there come some decisions in that process which I'm going to talk about today as well as cover the deck. But before we jump into it, the essential idea of the deck is that we use Macargo from Deoxys to put any card on top of our deck, and then we use Swing Dance to draw that card. Essentially, you have a Pidgeot Quick Search, but a little bit more complicated. And personally, I was never a big fan of Pidgeot. I never liked that just instant go grab a card. I liked something like the Macargo Ludicolo combo, where it did take a little bit of setup. Both are perfectly good powers on their own. Smooth Over is great by itself. Swing Dance is great by itself. And then when you put them together, it is just a really awesome power. And I wish the Pokemon trading card game would do more things like this, where it's just not an instant like handout. It's, it is a little bit more of a um, combo, I guess. But that's going to be the essential combo of the deck. And then we'll go ahead and just jump right on in here. So... We're going to play a 3-2-3 Ludicolo line. Um, the low tide you're going to notice, we do play the range-inch Pokebody. This is very similar to, um, I don't know if it's a bad way to describe it, maybe like a personal Nidal Queen heals one damage in between turns. Um, Lombre heal one damage in between turns. So essentially, we do have some decks in the format that do some spreading. Um, Rock Lock is a very common example of that. And then... Um, of course, you got like Dark Tranitar, Rosses, Bomb Tar, things like that. Um, so that's going to help with those. That's why we play these variations. I actually think the attacks are subpar to the Deoxys variations, but that Rain Dish Pokebody makes it worth the effort. We play three copies of Ludicolo. Not only is this going to be our main attacker, but also a big part in setting up that Ludicolo Macargo combo. Um, your main attack is going to be Circular Steps. The plus side for this is that you're going to be able to hit for a ton of damage. And it's able to take advantage of Scramble. The downside to this is your opponent has a lot of control over how much damage you can do. Because you don't include Ludicolo, so at most you're going to be hitting for 50 um, with your bench, plus their active is going to be 60. Not most, at least. Um, and then you take 10 off for Double Rainbow. So your opponent can keep you at 50 damage, and then it's completely dependent on how much they fill their bench. Depending on what deck and variation you're playing against, usually you're going to get somewhere between 70 and 100 damage with that. Healing Steps is also an interesting attack. I think a single energy for 30 is solid damage. Um, and then don't underestimate that discarding. There is some really, really good situations where you can discard cards from your hand to take yourself out of a knockout range, um, really mess with your opponent's math, and create some very awkward situations for your opponent. Now, I also play one of the Happy Dance Lily Colo. This is very matchup specific. Um, against decks like Rock Lock or Powtar, this is going to be huge. Against more general you hit me, I hit you decks, you're not going to see this being nearly as effective. Um, it really, really is in there for spread decks in the format. Now, you can argue to play a fourth low tat. I don't hate that. I mainly just cut it for room. Next up, we play a 2 2 Rhydon. Um, Rhydon says, as long as Rhydon is your active Pokemon friend, all damage done to your bench. This is an exceptionally good body in this format. Not only does this prevent Metachamp from spreading onto your bench, Dark Trainitar from spreading onto your bench, and then um, different things with Rock Lock too. They've also got the Spinning Tail Dark Trainitar. It's also a fighting type Pokemon with a solid 90 hit points on a stage one that can take advantage of Scramble. This is just absolutely outstanding. Um, it can knock out a, I'm sorry, no, it cannot knock out a Dark Trainitar. Um, you will be shy on that, but it can knock out a Dark Ampharos. It's a great attack against some of the more aggro decks in the format, like Zapdos EX, for example. Um, fighting is just a really, really good type to have. Metagross EX in the format. It's a solid attacker against Nidal Queen. Probably can't get one shot in return. Just a lot of really cool things you can do with right on here, but mainly it's that body, fighting typing, and then solid attack that can take advantage of Scramble. Two Slugma, two Macargo. It is unfortunate, but there is not a one retreat Slugma in the format, so we do have to play two, but Collect is a solid attack. Now, for our starters here, I'm going to call this five, um, but essentially 
We play two Dunsparce, one Plusle. This is what I am uh, messing around with right now. Um, I'm going to show you a second variation of the deck where I do play that third Plusle. And the idea is, is Dunsparce is better. You do notice a pretty big difference between grabbing two basic Pokemon and grabbing three. The plus side with Dunsparce is obviously the extra basic, and then you have the sudden flash attack, which can be great for stalling. While the plus, on the other hand, has the positive spark. This is going to be really strong in matchups where you are going to try to be setting up KOs on things that maybe Ludicolo would not be able to one-hit KO like a Dark Dragonite, for example. But if you can get off a couple of positive sparks, you're going to put that Dark Dragonite into a one-hit knockout range. And 2005 does not run a lot of really good healing options, so a lot of the times that damage from positive spark is going to stick. The other thing with it is, is you are putting something in your opponent's face they have to deal with. You're basically saying, I'm just going to sit here and go positive spark until you knock me out. Building up all that damage on your bench, you need to knock me out. And as soon as they take that prize, that's going to activate your scramble energies. Playing one copy of Jirachi. Jirachi's just so good. Um, you do need something to get basics on your bench. That is a huge part of your setup. But if you've got all that going and you either need to sacrifice something for a turn that you don't want to devote energy to, or um, your setup, you just need to find that rare candy, that evolution, whatever. Jirachi is a great go-to option. I'm going to say a lot of decks in this format did play the three Dunsparce, one Jirachi. You can go like four Dunsparce, one Jirachi. That's even better, but it's very, very hard to find space for it in this format. Lastly, one Minim. I am a huge fan of Minim and some of these early decks. Um, Negative Spark, once again, can be great for setting up one-hit knockouts, especially against decks like Rocklock. And then Sniff Out is, not only is it going to let you recycle some resources, it plays really well against some of those awkward stall decks, but at the exact same time, it's putting something in your opponent's face that you're saying, you deal with this, otherwise I'm going to get a massive advantage from it. So a lot of the time you're going to find in situations where, let's say, we're tied on prizes. Maybe we're both tied 4-4. I can't make a great play this turn. I'm just going to send up Minim, and I can start using Sniff Out. If you take the knockout... I can activate my scramble energies. If you don't take the knockout, well, then I'm just going to keep using Sniff Out to get uh, recycling resources in my discard pile. Jumping into the supporter lineup here for Celio's Network. Search your deck for a basic revolution card. Very strong trying to get that Ludicolo Macargo combo out. Three Copycat. Um, Copycat is another card that's exceptionally strong in this format. Um, players will a lot of time have larger hand sizes, especially for playing against decks like Metacham, for example. Um, it's not uncommon for them to have very large hands. And then you play three copies of Steven's Advice. Once again, not very uncommon for players to have large benches. There's nothing in this format that really punishes you for it. No Giant Stomp, no Dust Nor, nothing like that. I'm going to say that generally Copycat is going to play better against turn two decks like Metacham, while Steven's Advice is going to play better against setup decks like Nidoqueen, Queen, for example. Um... I would like fourth copies in here both, but just with where I was setting, it's not very realistic. Two Rockets Admins. Now, this seems relatively low and a big switch from what you see when you see four in a lot of decks in 2006 and then the RSPK format. The general line of thinking with this is, is you don't have as many ways to control your opponent. A lot of decks like Nidoqueen, Queen, for example, don't have any ways to shut off Pidgeot or opposing Macargos. So while putting your opponent at a low hand size can be very strong, it also doesn't do a whole lot if they can just quick search or smooth over for something to get out of it. I'm going to say we do play the Battle Frontier in this deck, but generally speaking, setting up here is going to be more important than just playing the Rockets admin, from my experience. One copy of Mr. Briny's Compassion. Absolutely love this in the deck because um, a lot of this is not a very heavy one hit KO format. So there's going to be a lot of situations where your opponent might hit you for, let's say, 70 or 80, and then you're able to brainies that Pokemon up and just keep on doing this. Um, I found this to be really effective with Scramble Energy, where I'm behind on prizes. I can send something up, hit them, brainies it back, send something else up, Scramble, hit them again. Um, just a really, really, really effective in this format. Also note with this Macargo, it's got a high, high, high retreat cost. There's going to be a lot of decks in the format that try to take advantage of this. Things like both Dark Dragonite and Powtar are going to try to bring this up. So being able to get it out of the active spot with Briny's Compassion is going to be huge for us. Three Rare Candy. We're playing a 3-2-3 Ludicolo line. I do value that second Lombre in the deck because of how popular I think Rocklock is in this format. But at the same time, too, um, we do want to be able to just skip right to the Ludicolo. 
or cheat out a ride on and recargo on the first turn we play him down if necessary. Two via Seeker. Absolutely love this card in the format or in this deck. We play such a fast supporter lineup. Um, I've always found it to be a pretty live card. I I want a third one in this deck. Generally, I'm going to say in a lot of situations, I I'm using it to cycle the Brightness Compassion um, and try to gain advantage that way. But yeah, I just absolutely love the S Seeker. I really would like to find room for a third in this deck. Um, and I'll find myself using Sniff Out for this lot just for the general utility of it. One Retriever. We do play some thin lines in here. The 3-2-3 three, three, Ludicolo. Sometimes we'll need an extra one in there, especially in a matchup where we are going to play down the Happy Dance Ludicolo. And then we are um, just a 2-2 two, two right on line. And in some matchups, that right on is just absolutely huge. So we've got that. One pal hand extension. Um, this has been testing okay for me. Not as amazing as I thought it would be, but it's testing really nicely. It's great to either um, bring up something weak or in situations where your opponent overextends, you can actually do a pal admin combo on like a Pidgeot and get a knockout there. Overall, like I said, I think it's worth the spot, but yeah, it's definitely not the, um, I guess, perfect card I was hoping it would be. And then we play four copies of Battle Frontier. So the biggest decision you have in this format or in, with this deck is, do you play Battle Frontier or do you play Desert Ruins? Now, um, Battle Frontier is going to counter Pidgeot-based decks, Rocklock, Dragtrip. Those are going to be your three big decks for Battle Frontier. Well, Desert Ruins, on the other hand, is going to counter EX heavy decks like Metacham EX, Turn 2 Zapdos, and then, of course, you're going to have crossovers between the two, like Blaziken, for example, where the Desert Ruins can be very strong, but the Battle Frontier can be as well. I am not... It depends on the meta you're expecting. I'm not going to sit here in a video and tell you, oh, this is 100% the better option, because I haven't found it to... I haven't found either to be perfect. Um, I find the Rocklock matchup is going to be really, really hard, if not near impossible, without Battle Frontier. While the turn two Metasham matchup is going to be incredibly difficult if you're not playing Desert Ruins. I do want to add, though, this is one of the main reasons that we play Minim, is essentially we can play that fifth stadium. A lot of decks only play four, so if we're playing against something like Drag Trode, we can throw down that first Battle Frontier without any fear, and then constantly be using Sniff Out to try to get it back. This is even more effective against Metacham when we're sniffing out Desert Ruins. We're going to make sure we lock one of those in play. Energy line up here, four double rainbow energies, pretty standard for basically all of our main attackers can abuse them. Three multi-energy. Uh, multi does a couple different things. One, we can use it for like healing steps. We can use it for positive spark. And then of course we can use it for um, minimum's negative spark. All those things, there's gonna be situations where we wanna use those attacks. And in, in some very, very rare situations, we can actually use metallic below on Jirachi with it. Um, three scrambles. I did go with three scrambles in this deck. I think you can argue between two to three, depending on what you're playing against. This variation of the deck is built more towards countering um, stage two decks and other decks where we're going to find ourselves falling behind more easily. If you're expecting to play against more Metacham style decks um, where they're not going to let you have that lead, then you might want to drop the third scramble for something else. But we'll talk about that a little bit in the second deck or second list. Two heal energies. Heals is just really strong in the format. There's a lot of um, like Nidal Queens, um, Toxic, if they try to go Sudden Flash to buy themselves a turn, stuff like that. I just find heal energy to be very useful. And then you got situations where you can play heal energy and you can actually cycle your heal energies with Mr. Briny's Compassion. Two water energies, just two basic water energies in the deck. Um, you're going to find yourself in situations where maybe you have a scramble and multi attached to um, Ludicolo. You do need that basic water. I do want to note there's nothing in this format that recycles basic energy, um, or at least nothing that sees any sort of actual play. So um, something like Hole on Farmer or Night Maintenance or something, you're not going to have it. So playing the basic energy versus the multi um, doesn't make a whole lot of difference outside of um, just you can't stack the multi, and you got to be really careful with your playing on that. So this is going to be my, my I guess, <clears throat> what I would say very general Ludicolo deck. And then the second one is going to be more counter towards beating like a turn two Metacham deck. I would say in the current format, this is probably the better variation of the deck. The format is pretty wide open. You're going to see a lot of um, decks like Powtar, for example. You're going to see more Rocklock decks. Um, turn two Slowking did very well at the last 2005 format. Things, All things like that, Battle Frontier is going to counter. Where 
this was at the time the biggest deck at the time was turn two meta champ and this deck is built pretty heavily to counter that it's very similar um but the notice you'll note that we play the four desert ruins over the four battle frontier and then we did switch a scramble energy to a multi-energy expecting the fact that we are not going to be able to activate multi-energy nearly as often and then the last change is I did add a warp point to the deck. I believe that was over, what was that over? Well, yeah, it's just as awkward. Well, we played a, we played a warp energy over something in this variation of the deck. Um, the other thing to note here is I did go with the three plusle instead of the two down sparse one plusle. I think you make good arguments for both, and that's something that I'm still testing with the deck itself. Um, I would say, like I said, if you had to show up to a tournament, you weren't sure of the meta, I would definitely play this variation of the deck. If you had to read that EX decks were going to be very popular, I would definitely play this variation of the deck. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and you enjoy you. I hope you enjoyed the video got some useful information out of this i know this is a very there's a lot of different things you can do with this deck so any questions or comments put them down below there is a lot of text for this deck that you can argue in here things like strength charm crystal shard atm rock those are all things that i've considered i think the backbone to any good ludicolo deck has to be your consistency you have to consistently set up that ludicolo consistently set up that macargo and then really decide on what text you want to play um, I think I've really debated ATM Rock. I think that would be great in here. Strength Charm I haven't found as useful because players are really good nowadays about playing around circular steps. And usually they're expecting the Strength Charm, so they play around it. And then Crystal Shard. I like Crystal Shard in the deck, but um, it's just room. I think it would be below both Strength Charm and ATM Rock for me unless I had a really good meta um, call that decks that were weak to uh, Crystal Shard were going to be heavily played. Like I said, I think the most the strongest combo that I have found with this deck so far is that VS Seeker, Mr. Brainiac's Compassion. I definitely want to find room for a third VS Seeker in the deck. And I'd even like to test some sort of four VS Seeker deck where we just have all these options, constantly being able to get back admin, compassion, stuff like that. Um, I think you can also argue a second minimum in the deck. I had that in there for quite a long time before ultimately just dropping it for space. Um, I think being able to use Sniff Out was highly underrated at the time, and it's incredibly, incredibly useful. But other than that, that's going to go and wrap up our Ludicolo video. If you have any questions or anything, like I said, post them down below. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. That helps me out a lot. Um, and I really appreciate that because I put a lot of work into these videos. But I hope to see you in the next video.